Hey guys, this is a, another one of those language videos, and I'm doing it in a different room today. Yeah, this room isn't exactly the best looking, but oh well. Here, let me shift it a little bit to the right. Whatever. Can't control what the room looks like every day. Plus, this one's got more books, comic books, and everything else that I've accumulated over the years. Anyway, so back uh, to what I wanted to talk about. Uh, this is more of advice than anything else, and I'm no, I'm no perfectionist, and I'm not fluent 100% kind of thing. It's not like I speak it naturally at Japanese, but I'm at least wanting to uh, expose how I feel and what worked for me f to learn. So here, I want to at least say something about it. Uh, a lot of times, I don't want to call it a mistake, but it seems like it's so common that people go out and when they want to learn Japanese, they instantly go and start trying to learn <clears throat> hiragana and and katakana, and they're trying to they're trying to get started there. And it's for me, I think that was probably one of the uh, things that always felt held me back. Not so much held me back, but I don't want to say this. Um, it it was one of those things that where you got so caught up on it and you didn't learn because you were so caught up on trying to learn that and you had nothing to really stick it to you know, unless you had a lot of um, Japanese magazines or books that had uh, just simple Japanese in there because then when you get into regular Japanese which involves uh, kanji when you get to that level you know it's uh, it's one of those things if you don't have any real uh, understanding or knowledge of the language you don't have any vocabulary you don't have any real understanding of uh, of grammar or anything like that it becomes a lot harder to actually use uh, hiragana and katakana to understand anything because at this point it's just abstract you you got these you, you, you'll, you'll learn the pronunciations to them but you're not gonna have anything to tie it to as far as what it should look like what the words should look like or uh, it helps a whole lot and you know some of these things here let me see if I can at least see the where the note is on this I at least want to point it out in my one of my books see and here's a uh, here gone on Katakana and uh, this this goes out mainly to you YouTube Asaurus yeah as you pointed out this thing um, yeah there we go a but yeah, there we go, it's focusing. And you see it has a star next to it, and this is a relatively um, older book, I believe. I forget when I got this, it was a long ass time ago. But as you can see right here where it says obsolete. There you go, obsolete. And it's like, there you go. So, I swore yesterday when I looked at that video, I've been out of town a couple of days, and I had, my throat's a little bad, because of pollution and sinuses and everything else. But anyways, <clears throat> when it came to that symbol, I was like, what? I've never seen that. Or at least I've never seen it used. And then I thought back, maybe I have. Maybe I'll look at my book. And here it is. Here's that little funky symbol. And here it goes, obsolete. So, you know, it's just one of those things where you go, okay. But there you go. It's obsolete. And so, you know, some of these websites will just give you the whole map or something like that and they'll expect you to figure out and a lot of it is kinda easy I guess I'll try and explain that in a later video perhaps um, how easy it can be if you uh, take take your time and you can visualize it but I still would suggest having the ability to understand uh, the language to begin with if you can speak it then learn how to read it. it's not so much harder uh, than learn how to speak it at that point but if you don't even speak it and you're trying to learn how to read it that's a different story altogether so anyways long story short um, I would suggest uh, learn how to speak it before you learn how to read it although uh, for most people who don't have Japanese friends or there's no Japanese community around their, uh, where they live if they're outside of Japan it's kinda of hard to practice with anybody anywhere at any time at that point and of course your main thing your main uh, way of uh, testing yourself to see if you understand anything is to get a book like this I just happen to have this graphic novel in my hand so you know you get to that point and it's just another thing but I suggest learn how to speak it first and then try and learn how to read it 
And uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. It's more like learn to speak it, but don't learn how to read and write it so quickly because you have nothing to cement any of your uh, reading skills to. What, what fun is it going to be to read it if you can't understand what anything says? You could pronounce it, but you wouldn't understand what it says. Uh, anyways, uh, but there you go. My thoughts on it. And that's how I learned. I uh, At first I tried to learn how to read it, but then I, I just said, forget it. I'm going to learn how to speak it. And then once I learned how to speak it, I came back learned tried to learn how to read it. And it was almost instantaneous. I started picking it up. It was easy. It was easier. Because once you figure out romanization from one of these uh, um, Japanese language books like this one, once you get to that point, you figure out how romanization works and how it should be pronounced after that. Learning how to read Japanese it becomes 12 times easier because at least you have a mental understanding of uh, the syllables and how they're going to be pronounced at that point. I just hope this helps somebody out there who's trying to learn Japanese and if you're wondering uh, how you should go about it, well, that's my uh, advice. Uh, learn how to speak it first and go learn how to read it because it'll be, <laughs> it'll be a lot easier. Alright, that's it for this video.